Okay, we're good. Welcome everyone to the April 27, 2020 Select Board meeting. Just a reminder, as much as possible, place yourself on mute when not speaking, and then please remember to click your button back on to speak, and that should cut down on a little bit of the background noise. I'm going to apologize. I have a water pump in my basement, and because it rained all day, every now and then you're going to hear it. So my apologies because it's at this end of the house. Um, it is my job to read the um, emergency provisions, and then we will uh, have the Pledge of Allegiance. Or should I reverse that, Connor? Your thoughts? Uh, makes no difference. We got to fly up. You can do the pledge now if you want. Sure. If you'll all stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So, RSA 91-A emergency provisions require me to read as chairperson of the Barrington Select Board I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of COVID-19 pandemic and in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12, pursuant to executive order 2020-04, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, I am confirming that we are providing public access to the meeting by telephone with additional access possibilities by video or other electronic means, that we are utilizing Microsoft Teams for this electronic meeting. All members of the select board have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through this platform, and the public has access to contemporaneously listen and, if necessary, participate in this meeting. Phone participation is by dialing 1603-664-0240 and entering conference ID 5935394880 and hitting the number sign on your keyboard. Video participation is by clicking on a link bit.ly backslash capital B-A-R-R S-B-2-0-0-4-2-7. Providing public notice of the necessary information for accessing the meeting. We previously gave notice to the public of the necessary information for accessing the meeting, including how to access the meeting using Microsoft Teams, phone or video. Instructions have been provided on the website for the Town of Barrington at www.barrington.newhampshire.gov. Providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are problems with access. If anyone from the public or a select board member has a problem utilizing this format, please call 664-0146 or email Connor MacGyver at administration at barrington.newhampshire.gov. Adjourning the meeting if the public, oh, we will be adjourning the meeting if the public is unable to access this meeting, although I can see with the number of participants, it seems to be going well. In the event um, that there is no access for the public, the meeting would be adjourned and rescheduled. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting will be conducted in an alphabetic roll call order vote. Let's start by taking a roll call attendance, starting with select person air. And when each member states their presence on the meeting, please also state whether there is anyone in the room with you during this meeting under the required right to know law. Select person air. Uh, Daniel air, I'm at 334 Old Ponca Turnpike. I am by myself. There is no one to influence my vote. George, can you, George, can you unmute, please? Sorry, Madam Chair. George Bailey, by myself, 19 Chesley Drive. Andy? Select person nap? I don't have a picture of them. Andy, are you on the meeting? 
I'm gonna message him right. I, I right. see his I see his video. He's trying to unmute himself. It looks like I'm gonna mute you, and then you try to unmute yourself. Andy, are you present? He is. I'm watching his video. He's talking. He's trying. He just wrote it. And said, I'm here and unmuted. Select person's kosher, 21 James Henry Drive. Um, I'm here, and I'm with my dog. That is it. Okay, so kind of Andy's going to leave and come back. German Shepherd. Oh, very nice. Um, select person, Hardikoff. I am at 48 Stone Farm Road. I have in my home currently my husband and my Bernese Mountain Dog and probably my 24-year-old son at some portion of the meeting. Can you hear me now? Yes, Andy. Okay, I just exited and rejoined. Okay, now we can see you. Okay, all I see is Connor's screen. There we go. So you're present at what location, Andy? I am present and alone at 96 Lindsay Point Road. Very good. Um, so moving on past our remote participation roll call is a first up public hearing for the issuance of a building permit at 759 Longshore Drive, a private road for residents Patrick and Melissa Lassard, map 104, lot 107. Has anyone um, not reviewed this material in detail or have we already all done our background homework and <clears throat> reviewed the material? I have reviewed it and I have questions for the applicant if the applicant is present. Okay, do we have Patrick or Melissa Lassard present? Do they have a representative, Madam Chair? Mr. MacGyver, is there anyone available to speak to Patrick and Melissa Lathard's um, application for building permit? Uh, I don't see anybody on the meeting um, by Patrick or Melissa Lathard. Okay. The, um, the building inspector is on the meeting and there may be questions he can answer, but uh, I'll leave him up um, to make that decision. Okay. It depends on what the question is. What were your questions, select person Bailey? Well, the first question I have is I noticed that uh, the drawing does not, uh, the application does not indicate that they are using two uh, lots. So the application is incomplete, does not show. Uh, no, they merged it. I'm sorry. Madam Chair, do I have the, do I have the uh, permission to speak or do I have to uh, give it up? Are you giving us a list of your questions? So the first question is that on the application and the drawing, it's not showing the conjoined lots, correct? That's correct. And that's okay, my... what other question did you have? I have other questions on, uh, do they have a lot line change that combines this to uh, one lot? Okay, and any other questions? And, I, and on the drawings, there isn't any setbacks as to the distance for uh, to the water. Okay, setbacks. Okay, any other questions? No. The question on the septic system was answered, and that's currently what I have now. Okay, so. And then, um, and then on the the reason I bring all of this up, Madam Chair, is on uh, the uh, uh, road agent's uh, letter back to the uh, select board on uh, uh, line uh, two and three. It's, it talks about. Uh, the existing combining of uh, 108 and 107. That's the reason why I have these questions. Yep, I read that as well. Mr. Huckins, could you speak to it in the absence of the applicant? They did merge the lots already. They did a voluntary merger and it's all been recorded. So it's one lot of record now. So we have one lot of record now. Um, the, well, lot line, the lot line change that Mr. Uh, that select person Bailey spoke of 
is there a need to indicate that on the um, document checklist material? I believe their application is shown as one lot and George was questioning that it used to be two. Okay, so there's there's been a voluntary merger and the material shows it now as the one lot. And I am assuming the two lots that merge are now indicated as lot 107. Correct. Okay. Um, drawing of setbacks to wetlands uh, select person, Bailey, is that correct? Yes, they had a uh, they had a drawing, Madam Chair, that uh, showed the uh, uh, proposal for the new foundation that they want to put in. And the uh, the setback is from the distance from the water is indicated on the older uh, drawing and uh, they do they do indicate the distance uh, from the foundation back to the uh, uh, new foundation the old foundation and I was just looking for the new one and they don't have a distance on the stairs that they propose to go for the new one also so that's just the questions I have uh, with, with the incomplete drawings so if you George this is Andy speaking if you look at the first the drawing there which is the proposed foundation it shows the distance from the edge of the water to the edge of the stairs at 79 feet and the distance um, in the other section the other over toward their dock at 93 feet back to the edge of the foundation yeah I, I see so, that farther than the current distance from the foundation at 88 feet. Any other questions, concerns, select person Bailey? Nope, I just, uh, do we have that uh, uh, lot line change uh, document on hand? Does the, do you have that uh, John? I don't have a picture of it with me, but they did merge the two lots together. They did it before this application was brought over. Uh, Madam Chair? Yes. Slap um, first there. Two, if you look at the plans, it's signed by the uh, Norway Plains. Yes. So it has, for them to sign plans, it should be recorded. Well, I think I. Think I'm under the understanding that our code enforcement officer has indicated that the voluntary merge took place, was done and complete, and so by indicating lot 107, it's it's now indicating the co-joined merged lot. Is that correct, Mr. Huckins? That is correct. Okay, so I'm not sure if if one took place before the application was filed, why would they go back and show something that was historical? Madam Chair? Yes, select person Bailey. I'm not trying to be a pain in anybody's seat. What I'm trying to say is that when I pulled up the drawing to turn around and verify this, the uh, when I went to the town uh, website, it still still indicates that there are two lots, and that's the reason why the questions I had were there. So, it, And Chairperson yeah. Hardikoff, I can speak to that. Okay, go ahead, Mr. MacGyver. The um, the tax map isn't updated in real time when lot lines change. Uh, we pay uh, every time the, the lot lines are adjusted. Uh, we send them over in batches. There's a disclaimer on the first landing page of that online tax map that indicates as such um, that that shouldn't be taken for 100% um, accurate up-to-date information. It's a good service we provide. Uh, but the cost incurred for keeping it up to date for mergers that happen uh, on an ongoing basis would be more than we have budgeted. Okay. Thank you for everybody's information and input. I appreciate it. Okay. Is there any other questions from members of the select board? Would anyone like to make a motion in response to the issuance of the building permit for map 104 lot 107? Chairperson Hardikoff, you should seek uh, public comment for the public hearing before a vote. Oh, my apologies. Uh, is there anyone that would like to speak um, for public comment in reference to the issuance of the building permit at 759 Longshores Drive? If you are trying to speak, I'm going to pause for about 30 seconds while you um, 
indicate in perhaps a quick message to Connor MacGyver that you would like the the opportunity to speak. So if you're operating a computer uh, in the meeting, click the microphone to unmute yourself. If you're over the phone, use a uh, star six on your keypad to unmute yourself. And you can also type in a message uh, if you're participating on a computer. And Chairperson, I don't see anything coming through. This is Andy Knapp. I will make a motion to issue a building permit for um, Patrick and Melissa Lassard at 759 Longshores Drive, tax map 104, lot 107. Yeah, second. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to uh, address the caveats that were put on there for uh, the, uh, the gravel and the up upgrades that were recommended by our department heads. With all recommendations noted by um, department heads. Thank you, Selectman Knapp. You're welcome, yes, Selectman Kelly. <laughs> Person, are you still with us? Sorry about that, guys. Apparently, when you press certain things, it just takes you right out of the meeting. So my my apologies. I'll someday get used to Microsoft Teams. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Can you see me? No. Nope. No. Okay. Let me try this again. I'm hearing a weird like ringing when you're talking. <laughs> Does anybody else hear that? It sounds like a dog whistle. Yeah. Yes. Okay. No, no, I don't I know what you're talking about. It was just you. Yeah, what, <laughs> are you, what are you talking about, Jim? <laughs> Spending too much time with your German Shepherd. Yeah, he's looking at me funny. He, he hears it too. I don't see Jim's picture. Okay, I hope this doesn't happen too often. I don't see you. Okay. Connor, point me in a direction yes. where people can yeah, see. I would, rec I would you recommend leaving and rejoining. I've done that three times already. Okay. But you haven't left all the way for some reason. Okay, so in a call, sets to Zoom. 100%. The hang up button, the red hang up button to start. And okay, then hang up. In. Yep. Hopefully. Um, it says Tracy's requesting a control. Was we allowed to deny? Yeah, you're, you're seeing that come across because I'm sharing my screen with the files on it. Um, I think she was just clicking through some options to see if she could get her uh, video to come back. Maybe she uses the same internet services at the town hall that isn't uh, isn't doing super hot right now. Oh, uh, maybe pay the bill. Maybe if we could get some signatures on the manifest. Can't do that. Guilty. <laughs> I mean, man, I don't know what your technology committee is doing for you, but geesh. Yeah, I, I couldn't tell you. It's been. Um, did anyone have? Uh, did anyone email you, Mr. MacGyver, asking for public comment access? No. Okay. So, would anyone on the select board like to make a motion in reference to the issuance of a building permit for 759 Long Shores Drive? Um, I have already made a motion for that. Okay. Yeah, exactly. uh -huh. 
And I made a motion for the issuance of a building permit on 754 Longshore Drive for Patrick and Melissa Lassard. Um, tax map 104, lot 107, uh, pursuant to them meeting all um, department head uh, recommendations. And did we have a second on that? Air. Yeah. Yeah, okay, and air was the second. Could I get a roll call vote? Um, I will note that on my uh, agenda, it says 759 Longshore. Is it 759 or 754, Mr. MacGyver? 759 yeah. is what I read. Okay, so 759, we have a first and we have a second and a roll call vote beginning with select person air, please. Air aye. Bailey aye. Nap aye. Hardikoff aye. Jim? Mr. Mr. Sakosha. He's, he's not going to show up, Madam Chair. Sakosha, I needed Thank that. Thank you. <laughs> so we'll have to do our best with technology to, to get, get through this, I guess. Um, it's my understanding there are no appointments today. We have one There's more, one more public, public hearing, hearing, though. Oh, I'm sorry. On the acceptance of the Department of Health and Human Service Stimulus Funds. I have to speak to this briefly. So as part of um, relief going out to medical providers, the Federal Department of Human Health and Human Services has provided stimulus uh, funds based on uh, each health care provider's proportional share of Medicare um, recipients. And so the town of Barrington through our ambulance department uh, was eligible and received uh, $3,998.49. Uh, first, looking for the select board support to uh, accept this uh, stimulus money uh, contingent on the town administrator and fire chief's uh, satisfaction after a review of the acceptance documents. Uh, which uh, we've received some guidance, but not uh, the, the guidance that we'll put our signature on. Um, that full paperwork hasn't come yet. Uh, we anticipate that the requirement will only be that we don't uh, follow up with billing for Medicare patients for services provided during the state of emergency. Um, that's what we've heard so far. So first we'll be looking for a public hearing uh, to accept the money. Uh, it would be deposited into the ambulance revolving fund. Uh, and if the board is willing to accept the stimulus money, uh, be looking for authorization to um, spend up to $3,998.49 out of the ambulance revolving fund uh, for eligible expenses. So moved. Uh, well, hang on. Uh, we're supposed to hold a public hearing. Would anyone in the public like to respond um, if you would, please send a quick chat message to um, our town administrator, Mr. MacGyver, and he'll alert us that you're out there and would like to speak to this. Last time I tried to time for 30 seconds and pause, I ended up hanging up the meeting. I'll do a better job this time. Um, so there's 30 seconds out there for anyone who would like to respond. Yeah, it would. Um, as a public, as a select board member, or as a comment from the public, as a select board member. Okay, we'll get to that right after public comment. Select person, air. And thirty seconds have passed. Go ahead, select person, air. Um, just reading the paperwork. If Mr. Bailey wants a motion, I'll second. It says conditionally accept the revenue. So uh, make it make this word and conditionally acceptance. So, um, um, so so your motion is to continually, I mean, I'm sorry, contingently <laughs> accept the funds contingent upon the town administrator and fire chief reviewing the acceptance document. That's correct. And to place that. and to place the funds into the ambulance revolving fund. To be used. That's correct, Madam Chair. That's my okay. motion. Okay, so so George Bailey has made the motion. Select person air has seconded it. Any other questions, comments, or concerns? Roll call vote, please. Air aye. Bailey aye. Nap aye. 
The coast eye. Article five. Thank you. And now be looking for a motion um, to authorize the expenditure of up to $3,998.49 from the ambulance revolving fund for qualifying expenses. Would anyone like to make that motion? Yeah. I'll, I'll and second. A second. I'll second. So um, the motion is made by select person air as worded by TA MacGyver and seconded by select person Knapp. Roll call vote. Air aye. Naley aye. Knapp aye. Sakota aye. Artikoff aye. Thank you guys. It's I know this is not an easy format. Um, appointments? None. Excellent. Um, Connie, your screen seems to be frozen, so I keep looking to you for some time. Okay, good. Thanks. You're moving again. Thank you. Um, I keep looking to you for, you know, the typical niceties of facial expression and things like that. I wasn't getting anything. Um, um, this yeah, is, you, and you might not. They're yeah. experiencing internet issues here at the town hall. Um, okay. And so, yeah, my video okay. may not be reliable. Yeah, it keeps freezing you. Um, this is the first of two public comments. If you are a resident or a business owner in the town of Barrington and you would like to speak for up to 15 minutes, uh, I'm sorry, for a total of 15 minutes, up to three minutes per person, please send a quick chat message so that we know that you're out there. And I will, again, give us 30 seconds to receive any type of communication if you would like to speak during public comment. Reminder, if you're on the phone, press star six to unmute yourself, or if you're participating on the computer, click the um, un, or the microphone icon to unmute yourself. Uh, you can also chat in a message as the chairperson has indicated. And if you're not unmuting themselves. So we've given that 30 seconds. TA MacGyver, is there anyone who's responded that they'd like to speak during public comment? Just received a chat message and that's uh, the fire chief has indicated that he would like to request the entire 15 minutes. Um, that would be no, but we'd give him three. <laughs> uh, okay, doesn't look like any the only there's only one person in the meeting and that I don't recognize um, and they've come in under the name of Dana. So if, if Dana is here to speak in public comment, now's a great time to do it. If you're just here to follow along. Um, carry on. Okay. Um, so seeing that we have not, we've paused for well over a minute, minute and a half, and we don't have indication of public comment, we'll be moving on to the review of the April 13th meeting minutes. I assume everyone's reviewed them. Are there any edits to the meeting minutes? <coughs> would anyone like to then make a motion to approve the meeting minutes? I would, Madam Chair, make a motion that we approve the uh, uh, select board uh, minutes from uh, April 13th, 2020. As written? As written. And is there a second? Andy Knapp, I'll second. Thank you, select person Knapp. Roll call vote, please. Here I. Bailey, I. Knapp, I. Coach, I. Artikoff, I. Thank you all. Staff report, please, by Town Administrator MacGyver. Great. So. Uh, most everything is covered in the uh, through my report as an agenda item. Uh, just a couple of things I wanted to mention. Um, first, a reminder of the training and uh, workshop programs offered by the New Hampshire Municipal Association and Primax. Um, one of the benefits, if you can look at it that way, of transitioning everything online right now is a lot of the trainings and workshops that these organizations are doing not only are they available online, but they're also recording them uh, and can be reviewed in self-study. So uh, certainly we have a support full of um, experienced members, but if there's um, anything that you'd like to see or participate a workshop in, whether it be right to know, uh, roles of a governing body, uh, the annual cycle, there's a lot of trainings out there. Um, and just let me know because it could be something that you don't even have a date and time. Um, I can send you a pre-recorded uh, webinar format uh, for that and those resources are all available online. We pay for most of them through our membership with the New Hampshire Municipal Association. Um, so it's a, a good service that we have for free, not like we don't pay for it a little bit, but 
Um, so just certainly reach out and let me know. And I've signed up to uh, retake the course just to remind ourselves of our responsibility to transparency and our responsibility on how we communicate as a select board external to our meetings. And so if anyone wants to join me, I'll be um, logging on for that um, meeting. Awesome. Uh, so moving on, the uh, second thing, I just wanted to announce that uh, after 28 years, uh, which I learned recently doesn't include uh, two years previously as a, in a part-time capacity, uh, Jim Chase is retiring from the highway department, uh, taking three decades of experience with him. He was a truck driver, labor equipment operator, um, and has been a dedicated employee. Um, his Certainly his equipment operating expertise and willingness to train the less experienced we really missed. So we miss, uh, wish Jim the best in his future endeavors. Um, very related. Uh, we have a full time opening in the highway department. Uh, that job is posted online uh, for anybody interested in applying right now. The application deadline is May 8th. Uh, and also we have a series of open bids uh, that are also advertised on our website uh, for asset management, engineering services, winter sand road striping, and a six-wheel dump truck. And I'll turn it over to Municipal Office Administrator Cottle for her report. All right, get ready for this list. So for your signature, I have AP Register 2020-34, Payroll Manifest 2020-33 and 33A, four intents to cut, um, water timber, two intents to excavate, one report of timber cut, three gravel warrants, three abatement approvals, sorry, two denials for exemptions, and one town hall purchase and sale agreement. That's all. That's all. That's plenty, right? That's plenty. <laughs> wow, you've been busy. Thank you. And the meeting minutes were very um, thorough. We appreciate that. Um, Okay, moving on to old business, T.A. MacGyver. Yes, please. So we're at the 2020 paving change orders. Is Mark on here? Would he like to speak to that? Yes. Can everybody hear me? Yes, yeah. we can. Okay. The, uh, <clears throat> the initial bid that came through uh, reflected the intention to uh, put a top coat on Locks Hill Lane. We can't do that this year uh, because uh, we're not quite low enough at the edge of the state road being uh, 126. Uh, we're not quite low enough to get the water off the state road the way we should be. So rather than butcher up our road to accomplish that, uh, I found out from the state that they're going to be putting a, an overlay on Route 126, uh, and that will give us the necessary clearance we need. We'll be able to top coat that next year. Uh, that would be change order number one, I believe. And I apologize, I don't have the paperwork in front of me, so I might need some help from Connor here. I think it's up uh, on the screen, Mark. Okay, well, it, I got change I gotta, order number one. Yep. So the second change order comprises uh, two additional sections on Oak Hill Road. Uh, one is in the center down by the big culvert. The other one is at the opposite end from the ledges uh, where it meets Scruton's Pond Road. Um, and also adding stone in the, in the course of the reclaim process to Malago Road, the top part of Oak Hill Road where the ledges are, where the road's blown up, and those two other sections that I just mentioned, the one down in the middle and the one up at Scruton's Pond. That, that reflects the second change order. And this is an increase or a decrease? An increase. It's an increase. Okay. It's a significant increase. Yep. Any other change orders as part of this? No. Okay. 
So select board, does anyone have any questions, concerns, feedback, comments in reference to change order one or change order two? Here. Select person here, go ahead. This is money well spent and stuff. I follow a couple of subdivisions in our town and they do a subdivision that follow regulations and stuff and certain conditions. This will save us money in the long run. And what they're in, in snow removal and ice things. So I'm very supportive of the change order. Thank you. Okay, any other questions, comments, concerns? Seeing as there are no other questions, comments, concerns from the select board, would anyone like to make a motion to accept? Do they need to be separate um, motions, Mr. MacGyver? No. Okay. Would anyone like to make a motion to accept change orders one and two? Madam Chair, I'll make it a change order to a to, uh, motion rather. I'll accept uh, change orders one and two from advanced excavating and paving. And uh, for the total uh, uh, increase of, uh, well, I don't have the total increase, but make a motion to approve the two uh, change orders. It looks like um, select person Bailey, the total increase is $124,520.50. Mm, that's not quite accurate. From the original contract to now the increase it's um a hundred and uh just under a hundred and three thousand oh because we had a decrease of the 22 330 on change order one thank you yes okay so do so um select person bailey has made the motion do i have a second it looks like uh select person air is motioning for a second could you verbalize that for people on the phone yes second. thank you so we have a motion and we have a second. Roll call vote, please. Here I. Bailey I. Nap I. Suppose I. And Hardikoff I. Chairperson Hardikoff, um, next the uh, under item V, um, there's a list and I have it up on the screen of the three funding sources. Uh, we'd be looking for the select board as agents to expend um, to uh, spend the indicated amounts or up to the indicated amounts um, in that order. You can make it as one motion. Certainly. So in, in reference to the change order one and two, um, we are requesting that expenditures or agents to spend from the 2019 non-lapsing road warrant article, we would spend $66,623.01 and from the 2020 operating budget, $600,000 and up to $100,000 from the registration fee capital reserve account. That is my motion. I'll okay. second that. I, I, the next person I heard was select person Bailey on a second. Could I have a roll call vote beginning with select person Air, please? Air, I. Bailey, I. Nap, I. Jim? Jim? Select person Sakosha, we haven't heard from you. Yeah, Sakosha, I. And Hardikoff, I. Thank you. Chairperson Hardikoff, just one quick thing about uh, paving. Certainly appreciate the board's support for these changes. Uh, you'll remember when we reviewed the bid that came in, uh, we knew that there would be some changes. Our road agent did an excellent job budging for the available work. Uh, one of the benefits of that and certainly the economy is we were able to do more work than um, what we originally thought we could with the budget available to us. Um, there's still uh, some comfortable room in the paving budget this year. Uh, you'll notice from the available funds just authorized expending. Uh, so there may be uh, future change orders if there's uh, once we get into the road construction season. Um, if there's more work we'd like to fit in for this year um, to you know catch up and get up to speed on uh, some of the roads that need some work. Um, and so we may be back to see you uh, once we get started, once we get into some roads. So I just want to make sure to give you that heads up um, now. Select person Hardikoff, have a comment. Go ahead, select person now. Um, I, I, just a general comment. One of the things that I know Dan had brought up that I think is probably worth looking into was having 
um, whoever the paving contractor was that would be here, in this case advanced, um, looking at doing some blending to blend some gravel in on some of the uh, dirt roads that we put a lot of effort into maintaining. So, um, I, I would be interested and I don't know how the rest of the board feels, but if it's something that ultimately better prepares us to have to do less maintenance and have much firmer gravel roads, it may be worth for further pursuing to see what that would look like. Uh, Mark? It's a great suggestion. You, yeah, Mark, did you have any um, comments on that or are you comfortable with that suggestion? I'm good with the suggestion. Okay. Um, Newt Road would be the likely culprit right off the bat. Uh, it's seeing an increased amount of through traffic. I mean, granted, there's only probably five houses on the road itself, but it, it, the amount of through traffic is really, it's really picking up. Uh, and we spend an awful lot of time and effort just trying to make that thing passable for about a month and a half out of the year in the spring, depending on the thaw. Um, it's it's definitely worth a try to try to inject some uh, some stone into that to try to keep the surface intact. Great. I think there's some wetlands on either side of that too, as you get towards the Madbury line. Um, oh, there is. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you uh, for comments in reference to that. Moving on to the uh, to recreation. I'm sorry. Select person air, like comment. Oh, go ahead. Select person air. And we have to come to realization, which is our changing. We didn't have frost in the ground, and with the snow, and the ice storms, we have to adjust to that compared to in the future. Gotcha. Any other questions, Madam, comments, or concerns in reference to the paving change orders? Madam Chairman, if I may interject on uh, Newt Road again. Yes, go right ahead. Um, <clears throat> one thing we need to realize and this is total hearsay from people who have been in, in this town a lot longer than I have, but supposedly Newt Road is a, it's an old logging road and it's called a corduroy road. The reason it's called that is because the old loggers laid timbers crossways in the road to support the gravel on top of it. What may be happening, and it, it's probably been happening for a while now, is those timbers, those logs are probably starting to rot and they're they're making a huge layer of peat underneath that road. Uh, so we just need to be aware of that going in that, you know, if we go to blending any stone in there, we can't get greedy and go too deep on it because we'll be right into that peat. Gotcha. Very good. Any other questions, comments, or concerns in reference to the paving change orders? I have none. Go ahead, select person Bailey. I said I have none, Madam Chair. Oh, sorry. Oh, very good. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you correctly. Okay, moving on to the recreation facility addition project award and additional project updates. Could we potentially start with the update? Yes, so uh, Jesse Tennis, Recreation Director, um, will be unmuting herself to speak to this. Um, in your packet and attached to my report, you'll find uh, a letter somewhat summarizing what she'll be speaking to and also an updated budget uh, with the estimated expenditures out of the Recreation Revolving Fund. Uh, if Jesse has had a chance to unmute herself, I will turn it over to her. Can you guys hear me? We can, yes. Jesse. Thank you. Perfect. Um, so, so really quickly, so through the process of looking into the addition, um, we were really trying to, to determine whether we needed to get a sprinkler system put in, um, if we would be kind of going over that, um, uh, recommended square footage, um, through that process, we had a fire engineer come in and, um, she, basically what happened is that she listed the food pantry as a mercantile, which is a, basically creating multiple occupancies within the building. So it has limited the um, gym capacity to 117 people, which um, is a little troublesome for some of the programs that we run. For example, summer camp, um, basketball programs, it's the emergency shelter for the ECLC. Um, so once that was kind of discovered, I've been working with Rick Walker, the um, the fire chief, and trying to kind of come up with an idea of how we could address that. 
And one of the ways that we can kind of separate the mercantile area from the rec department is by putting up a firewall from floor to ceiling. Um, obviously, that kind of put a huge pause on all the other programs just because or the projects just because we really need to do the walls prior to doing the floors, doing the floors prior to doing the bleachers. Um, so at this point, we have held off on all of those projects until we can get um, kind of some more ideas and some kind of, you know, quotes and things like that in regards to what that wall would cost um, and how we can try to address that issue um, as a town, you know, working together collaboratively, just brainstorming. Um, again, I've been working with Rick, with John Huckins, um, just trying to kind of come up with some different feasibility options. So at this point, um, we're really just bringing it to your attention, just letting you guys know that um, it's definitely a hiccup within all of a lot of our processes um, and really just looking to see if you guys had any questions or, you know, red flags that maybe we should be aware of prior to getting this ball rolling any farther. So. Um, I, I, does anyone like to speak at this time? If not, I have some comments. Oh, OK, so um, Jesse, I'm, I'm a little surprised by this. It's interesting to me that it's listed as a quote unquote mercantile when it's open two hours a week to both receive food and give out food. Does does the definition from this individual that did the evaluation change if in fact uh, the food was given out external to the pantry. In other words, right now during the COVID um, pandemic, there's a uh, folding table placed outside to both receive and hand out donations and people aren't entering the building. Does that change the mercantile definition? So uh, from based off of my conversations that I've had, I don't believe it would. I think that like if we were to even put that, make that place storage, it would also kind of be listed as the same um, area. So I'm not sure if Rick Walker is on the call or not, if he can kind of speak on behalf of that. But I'm so sorry, Rick, to put you on the spot. But Tracy, I really don't know the answer to that. Basically, what I've been told is that there's really not a ton of options in regards to, you know, separating those two areas unless, um, you know, it all becomes one area or we separate those two areas with that risk, with that recommended firewall. Um, Chief and the Walker, fire chief did there? comment in. Yep, he commented in and said it does not change it, even if it were storage, uh, that doesn't change the need for a two hour separation between the, the two spaces. Is it because it's an addition, Chief? The, the issue is, is that it probably didn't get caught X number of years ago. It probably should have been done back when the uh, ambulance base slash police station addition was put on the building. If you if you leave the building as a, uh, as the, the issue is, is right now you can't, you, can use it as a gymnasium, which limits the capacity because of the square footage per person. Um, but to use it for an assembly occupancy for um, setting up tables and chairs or single seating, um, there's not enough capacity to do that. So just so I understand, um, it can be used as a gym, for up to how many people? 114. The gymnasium space, where the, for, for lack of a way of putting it, is the basketball players, they need 50 square foot per person. So that's what's limiting. And in conversation with Jesse, my understanding is, is that a good number of the pro programs they run, that's not an issue, but summer camp and a few that go over the 100 square feet per person, I mean 114 person maximum would not allow them to use that space. What we're, we're in the process of working with a fire marshal's office to see if they'll uh, consider a one year waiver so that if the uh, summer camp program starts back up, the space could be used um, and, until when, if, for this year and it would give them time to make the repairs moving forward. Uh, 
Um, so if we were to move the food pantry to another location, say as we go about the town hall uh, build and left a space somewhere on that property for it, would that change the need for $55,000 worth of a firewall? I can't give you an answer to that while I'm looking at the code book. Okay, so can we table this issue until we've looked at the code book? Yep, and really and we, I was just really looking for questions or concerns that you guys had, um, basically just kind of gathering some information so that, again, once Rick and I continue to work throughout this process, we know that, you know, some of the concerns that we need to be aware of so that we were addressing everybody um, right out of the gate, so. $55,000 is a huge concern to me. Yeah, it was quite a shocker when it hit my email. The, um, you know, I understand the process completely, but I think that there's definitely some options to look at and things like that. But again, uh, that $55,000 is quite a hefty price tag. So I just wanted to, again, just make you guys aware of the project, um, aware of the concerns, because it will be affecting, you know, possibly some of our summer camp um, programs pending that waiver. So just, again, making sure that you guys are aware of the process. And if anything changes or as things evolve, we'll definitely be keeping you up to date in the project. So. so um, I'm curious, Jesse, just because I've sat in on so many um, rec commission meetings. Does the possibility exist if we moved the food pantry to the new town hall to have the offices you're considering built in that area and make this firewall part of that construction project? So that's definitely something that we can discuss with the Rec Commission. Um, however, I do know um, that we have definitely moved forward with this process. We have a recommendation for another company that we're looking at. Um, the aesthetics and the functionality of that space would definitely work a little bit differently be off of that front wall just due to the fact that the basketball court is going the other way so you know being aware of doors and doorknobs and things like that are things that we'll have to kind of look at um we've kind of looked at some of those options even up in the eaves prior to um even looking at the front of the building so that's definitely a note that we can jot down um and look at it throughout the process but i do have full confidence in the new addition process that we have as i really think that that space that's going to be built out there will maximize um you know everything but also make sure that it's that energy efficient up to date um that food pantry definitely needs a lot of updating as well so that would come with a hefty price tag just kind of off the top of my head um air go ahead select person air um i think it's not, we should think out of the box of different scenarios i like suggestions i don't really agree with town hall but maybe i could spend some time with the town administrator look at the plans and come up with different ideas and they can forward on to staff members and the select board. I guess my other question is, Jesse, can you incorporate this firewall in the build that you're doing to the front of the building and reduce the cost? Yep, so that's something as a board we've also discussed as well. I think getting the approval in regards to which company would be going, we would be moving forward with the addition would kind of give us that uh, jumping off point in regards to making those decisions. Um, but those are recommendations that we have already um, kind of have on the table and that we're going to be looking at um, in order to get kind of that best quote for the opportunity because again that one quote that you're looking at is just the one company that's come in and kind of determined that firewall issue um so there's definitely a possibility that we could encompass the two projects into one madam chair go ahead select person bailey uh i have two questions uh first one is the uh, payment for the uh, wall would that be uh, come out of the uh, revolving fund um, right now, we're really just looking at all of our options. Um, that's why I provided that financial document to you guys because I wanted you guys, I wanted to show you guys that we've been working diligently on kind of tackling that revolving fund and actually getting some of those projects done that we um, need to get done, but also are kind of giving back to the town. So that's where the walls and the floor and the bleachers kind of came in as all of those need some severe updating. Um, so that's really a discussion that we were hoping to kind of have with you guys, um, you know, as we kind of go down the pike, but that um, document that's right there basically shows that uh, we're going from 
you know, over $600,000 down to approximately $39,000 with all of these projects, as well as COVID paying our um, quarterly bills, things like that. So. I, and my, uh, my second question, Madam Chair, is how are we going to uh, work that into the limited square footage we have for the town hall if we were to put that same square footage there and all their <laughs> equipment and uh, the sector they have there? Would we need to get a hold of uh, uh, the uh, planning for that or uh, planning for the town hall or what? How would that happen? I guess what I'm hearing about this that's most important to note is that in order to even operate the gym as both the emergency ECLC location and to use it for um, situations, you know, remember our microburst that came through the camp when we had to move all the summer campers into the gym. So in order for the gym to become compliant for those two issues, speaking in in reference, you know, placing the addition that, that's being proposed completely off the table in order to make the town gym safe in order to be used in the capacity that it's used to being used. It appears that the firewall has to go in. Is that correct, Chief Walker? Yes, that's uh, the other option is sprinkling the building and that's a, a much more expensive process. Select person Hardicott. Go ahead, select person Knapp. So several years ago, um, we we had a, a kind of a similar discussion about the food pantry. And at the time, um, I had made the recommendation to consider looking at the um, back room of the highway department, moving the food pantry over there since the highway department has the equipment that is used to unload um, any of the the truck based food that they use they would bring the fork they would often bring a fork truck up to um, the ECLC area to unload it or up by the the rec department um, but if you moved it over there that could actually solve that problem and then the um, staff office space could get renoed to to actually meet their need as well so it it wouldn't end up being a takeaway from the highway department um, and it would also it would accomplish the rec department's need the food pantry's need and you could actually take care of the highway department all in the same process so uh, air. go ahead select person air no that's all i got like andy's thinking out of the box and stuff I really don't think we should involve the town hall that the different avenues or even different areas up there that could be used. And that's why I like to spend the time with the town administrator and then come up with some different ideas and present it to the board. Okay, so so yeah. the, the idea with the pantry is movement of the pantry, but that takes us back to the gym needs a firewall in order to operate. Well, that's Madam chair. Oh, go ahead, select person Bailey. Thank you. I think uh, on on the two issues here, Andy's uh, uh, issue was fantastic. I mean, it really opens everything up. It gives us uh, uh, more parking and everything else. It wouldn't interfere with anything that the rec is doing. But furthermore, I think that uh, I hope you're going to allude to it. Is it the safety of uh, the individuals using the gym? And I think. The walls at firewall should not be uh, nothing more than the approval uh, coming from the uh, rec commission to use that monies to have that. I think Andy has a wonderful idea with that. Okay, so those are some things to consider. So it appears to me that the select board would like the recreation commission to make some decisions on what can be done about the wall, correct? But from my standpoint, yes, Madam Chair. There you okay. go. Um, Chair Berzenharikoff, this is Connor. Um, yes, go ahead, this was the, MacGyver. Yep, this was the exact purpose of bringing this to board now. Um, the Recreation Department uh, has some work to do to explore different options. I think this was very productive to hear from board members uh, what suggestions they may have and what options they'd like to see considered. 
Uh, we hope to be back, uh, bring this topic back to the select board for further discussion, certainly with more information and uh, more information and recommendations maybe for the May 11th meeting. Uh, so thank you for giving it some thoughtful consideration. Okay. And thank you guys. And again, we'll keep you updated. Um, you know, we do have that waiver in the process. So hopefully this is something that we can kind of tackle over the next year. Um, and it's not something that we have to kind of, you know, jump the gun on unnecessarily, but just note that we are working uh, at the state level in regards to trying to solve this issue. Um, and hopefully we can try to get it solved as, um, you know, quickly and effectively as possible. Um, I think one of the things we also need to consider in reference to the pandemic is the potential of whether, and I hate to say this out loud, but will we have summer camp or will we continue to have a, a state that's um, on hold? And when summer camp occurs, will we have the same attendance based on the number of Americans that have lost positions. So I'll be curious to see. There's a lot of unknowns right now, I guess, is my point. Correct. So the the just kind of by to bookend my point about um, potentially looking at moving the food pantry is if you have a person who um, has women who who has need yet is supposed to have limited access in and around where um, certain individuals may be present. Um, this, by moving the food pantry, you remove that, you remove one of the barriers for them to potentially get their need. Yep. You know, one of the other options too, instead of a building is certainly, you know, having a dedicated truck that could move to various areas of this very large town and meet the needs of many as well. There's been a lot of different um, mobile food options available to those that are vulnerable and in need as well. So lots to consider. Um, moving on. Are we, we have the recommendation. Yep. Are we going to be talking about the addition project award at this time? Yes. We are. Before we do full discovery on the firewall. It's a good point and I'll certainly speak briefly and Jesse can can come in. The um, the firewall issue is largely independent of the addition um, to the respect that the addition doesn't necessitate the firewall. Um, the recreation, <coughs> excuse me, the recreation department um, is interested in moving forward with that addition regardless of the firewall project. Um, that's something that um, they've been working towards and don't feel is impacted. Um, I'll let Jesse speak to it, but I think the um, I think the plan would be to move forward. And I agree. Um, thank you, Connor, for speaking on behalf of that. Um, at this time, we have uh, worked for many, many hours in regards to the um, RFQ, the project itself. Um, I think that Carino Construction would be a great company, but they're also extremely flexible. Um, so going ahead and moving forward with the project um, and knowing that um, we can kind of work with them throughout this process, I think is going to be huge. Um, but in order to continue to meet our deadline, um, in order to you know get this built prior to um, winter and the ground freezing and things like that without postponing until 2021 year, um, I think that it would be imperative for us to uh, move forward with the Carino recommendation um, that was recommended from the Rec Recreation Commission. And Chairperson, just uh, one other quick thing. The benefit of the process the Recreation Department went through with the request for qualifications is certainly there was a scope of work included in that to give the folks putting in for it uh, an idea of what work they would be doing. Uh, but there's nothing that prevents the town from adjusting that scope of work Based on, based on the results of uh, this exploratory phase with that wall. That could mean that the adjusted scope is adding that firewall as part of the renovation project, uh, adding that to the scope. It could be if the, if the adjustments are made to say, hey, let's build the offices into the food pantry, which I'm not saying is a good idea or better than the others, but um, it could be that the scope is adjusted for that. So um, I don't think that the RFQ process is jeopardized by a change in scope. 
uh, like a request for proposal process would have been. I don't think the town has much to lose from uh, making that selection, um, working through uh, the flexibility with the contractor um, on any scope adjustments that might need to be made. Um, to finalize a, a project or projects that uh, meet the needs of the town and certainly the code. Uh, select person here. Go ahead, select person here. I, I, I saw this thing about your question about the $55,000 question. I kind of need more information before I'm making too much decisions. <laughs> Is so the vote that we were the vote that we were looking for is in regards to the addition. However, the fifty five thousand dollar quote is the firewall quote. Um, again, we're going to be uh, working through that process as a recreation commission to try to get um, possibly some alternative quotes in regards to what our opportunities are. Um, so that fifty five thousand dollars is really just a one company um, process, but that's also a separate pro a separate company that would be on site for the addition. Um, so the fifty five thousand dollar wall, um, you know, respectfully is part of the addition but it really isn't um as we're hoping that that would just be um you know kind of looked at a little bit separately i i think what the select board may be leaning towards and i i don't wish to speak on behalf of the entire select board without understanding but i i think the expectation that i'm hearing from the select board is that it would be helpful to go back and ask the builder that you're proposing to bring to the table tonight to ask them while they're on site what the cost to add this to that project would be. Is that what I'm understanding? Yeah. I see Air. select person Air nodding his head yes, but yep. I'm. Yes. Uh, select Any person Hardikoff, this is Connor. Uh, and I guess this is what I was getting at about our request for qualifications process. So because we're not um, the Recreation Commission isn't making a recommendation based on price and the select board isn't asked to make a decision based on price. The getting a, a price from the potential contractor for the project wouldn't would be separate from this request for qualification process anyways. The um, firms that put in for the project just provided um, estimated cost per square foot ranges for the project. So there's the if the town collectively were interested in having the same contractor build the addition and do the firewall um, that could be negotiated during the scope or contract um, and would uh, need to debate this for the selection if that makes sense sure but i think the select board's concern that i'm hearing is putting the addition on is fine but if the gym itself is not going to meet the town's needs then we're putting we're putting a um a want before what I consider a need, I guess, is where the concerns coming is. Am I interpreting this correctly? Madam Chair? Yes, select person Bailey. Thank you. I, I agree wholeheartedly with it. We, we need to uh, look at uh, the needs to uh, protect the uh, individuals that are going to be using the gym because if, if some of us, if we, if we remember that fire they had in Connecticut over 80, 90 years ago, and it, it, it destroyed a lot of lives during that fire. We can't afford not to have a firewall there, so provide the protection that we need. And even if we <clears throat> have to limit the summer people to 114 individuals, I mean, that, that's what we have to look at. But it would give us the opportunity to find out the, the firewall and also how the uh, uh, Rec Commission feels about the movement of the uh, uh, food pantry out and then allowing them to have that there for savings. You know, there's a lot to consider. Select so person I guess, go, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, select person Sakosha here. I do want to accuse myself uh, from making any decisions on this, but I would like to comment um, just coming from a uh, standpoint as the liaison for the rec department. Um, you know, they're trying to get this while they're, it's shut down in COVID. Obviously, the two-hour firewall isn't going to be a bigger build than the addition out front. And I think, you know, we should really have a bit more discussion of it right now. And 
kind of walk through, you know, it's a dead time, um, you know, it'd be happening in August um, from what the timeline says. Um, so I think any delay on this is just going to hurt the program further because, you know, we're already looking in, you know, at September comes October, we're looking at basketball in there. Um, you know, I would try and get the bulk of the work done before and then worry about the two hour firewall since we're already out of um, regulation. So I, think I, we have, I think our concern is now that we know we're out of regulation, whereas before we were blissfully ignorant, there has to be a plan in place for this. Um, I, I'll entertain a motion to approve, you know, the award of the addition. Um, if there's a select board member that would like to make that motion. So, um, this is select person Knapp. Um, go, ahead. go ahead, Andy. I would just just like to point out being a, is a former safety, health and environmental guy. There are several ways to skin the cat on this. So I, I don't see a huge issue um, with achieving a two hour fire rating, considering a double layer of 5-8 sheetrock actually meets the two hour fire code and they even make fire rated paints that will accomplish the same thing. So I, I I honestly don't think that's going to be a big deal and I can't see two layers of sheetrock costing a five eighths costing uh, $55,000. But that so I, I would I guess if what I'm saying is if it comes down to it, I'll make the motion to move forward with this. Excellent. Uh, Do we have a second? Do we have a second on approving the recommendation of the Recreation Commission to award the recreation addition to Carino Construction? Um, select person, Sakosha, unless you're yes. financially benefiting as the liaison to the rec department, you do not need to recuse yourself on this. Um, well, there's always potential. I mean, I knew all th actually all four contractors that we interviewed. Um, so, you know, they do reach out for work. Um, one of the ones that wasn't awarded, you know, I do work for uh, currently. So I just didn't want any um, thing coming back on me in case they reached out. Okay, I, so we have I just a first. To be we, yep. uh, we have a first. Do we have a second on approving the recommendation of the Rec Commission Award for the addition? Well, Chairperson paints, Hardikoff, may, offer, may I offer? Oh, sorry. Select person Bailey was speaking, I think. Go ahead, select person Bailey. It, it, it really pains me to see that we're going to move forward with this, but I, I wish there was some way that we could ensure that the wall would be there for safety. But in the meantime, I will approve Mr. Knapp's uh, motion. Okay. Oh, second, so, excuse me. I will second Mr. Knapp's motion. So we have a first and a second on approving the recommendation for the Rec Commission to award the addition project to Carino Construction. Any other questions, comments, or concerns? Yes. Go ahead, Mr. MacGyver. So similar to the town hall project where the the contractor was selected through request for qualifications process and then they got to work on the design and developing the scope of work in the contract. What I would anticipate is if the select board supported moving forward with Carino for that recreation addition, they would get started on designing an addition and simultaneously with the um, options would be explored that were previously discussed and Carino would be a partner um, through that process to determine just like select person Knapp said, if it's a matter of two sheets of, of sheetrock, if it's a matter of a sheet of sheetrock in certain paint, and they have access to the pricing and contractors and subcontractors where they could get us real time numbers and work with us. And the benefit of having somebody selected already based on you know, a request for qualifications is to trust to take care of the town's interest the best that we can. And that scope through the design phase can all be hashed out in the select board. But this project won't be finalized without select, without select board approval. So the select board decision tonight is simply to say, yes, we trust this contractor that's recommended to us to take us, hold our hand through this design build process. And the recreation department will be back next meeting to talk about what they've found so far 
and they'll be back many more times to bring you the design of the addition and the scope of work for um, whether it includes the wall or doesn't include the wall. So I just don't want you to feel like this decision right now is the last year decision you're going to make about the recreation addition uh, before it's built uh, because it isn't. Thank you for indulging me. Yep. So currently we have a um, first by select person Knapp. We have a second on the motion by select person Bailey. Any other questions, comments or concerns? It, the only the only other comment I have to make still goes back to the wall because. You know, it, when when you lose a child, uh, it's 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 a hard thing to overcome, and I would not want to think that the five of us, by uh, not in, not pushing hard on that wall, is there. That's all I have to say. Well, I'm quite certain now that we're aware of it that we will <clears throat> obtain the waiver, but get this done. Um, so in reference to the first and the second, could I have a roll call vote on this starting with select person air, please? Air, vote on all stations only. Yes. I'm sorry, one more time, select person air. Air, voting on qualifications only. Yes. So you're, you're, you're voting to award the recreation addition project to Carino Construction. On qualifications only. Okay. okay, that the that's not the motion that's in front of us though. The motion that's in front of us at this time, presented as a first by select person Knapp, was to approve the recommendation of the Recreation Commission to award the Rec Addition Project to Carino Construction. On qualifications. That's not that is not the motion in front of us, select person air. Well, it is based on qualifications. That's all they provided. They provided right. qualifications. What I'm trying to get at is select person air is like indicating it would stop there. They're being awarded the build as well. Right. Okay. And yeah. your vote is what? Yes. Okay. Bailey, I. Nap, I. Suppose recuse. Recuses himself. Very mm. good. And um, Hardikoff, I. I Thank would, you, everybody. We greatly appreciate it. Yeah, I absolutely want to know that we are continuing to react to the firewall to become compliant as quickly as possible. Absolutely. It's our top concern. Uh, we're definitely waiting on that waiver, but in the meantime, so we're going to be looking um, at some other options in regards to how to address that issue by working with, again, John Huckins and Rick Walker to make sure it meets the town needs and expectations. Um, so we will definitely be addressing that as quickly as possible, and we will keep you updated throughout the process. I would also strongly suggest that we ask the state fire marshal's office for a full review of whether that space is considered mercantile or not. On to forest stewardship plans. Yeah, so this is just for the board's information. A uh, select person air can certainly um, chime in also. Um, the town lands committee and uh, conservation commission went through a process last year to select a forester of record. Uh, Tim Nolan of Forest Land Improvement. Uh, they subsequently went through the process of uh, selecting uh, certain town properties to develop plans for. Uh, the three selections were the town for forest off Swain Road, the Goodwill property, which was recently expanded, and the 84 acre property behind the highway garage. So the um, Forrester waited for spring to develop forest stewardship plans for each of these properties. He's completed all three. Uh, very comprehensive documents. I provided a link to the full document in my report in each board member's printed packet. Uh, I provided a, a printed map that defines the um, Ford stewardship plan and the stands identified in each. So you have a map for each of the three properties. They're also linked to my report. Uh, so the Town Lands Committee and the Conservation Commission will work with the forester uh, to understand the plan and take step towards implementing it. Uh, it was presented as a 10-year plan, uh, steps to take and what order over the next 10 years uh, for each one of the properties. And the, certain, the goals and objectives are about good forest, forest stewardship. Uh, there isn't 
it's not like there's a lot of uh, timber harvest money to be made in these properties, and that would never really be the objective uh, other than um, taking good care, being good stewards of the property. So I just wanted to let you know that this is kind of a bookend to that process. The plans had been created uh, and are, are there to be implemented by the Conservation Commission and Lands Committee. Uh, select person, Air. Yes, uh, the town manager did a very good job. And then, too, it's very, we got a lot of information. If you take the time, you want to read up on it and stuff. He did a very professional job. We we're lucky and stuff. And we look forward to working with him in the future and stuff. And he satisfied both the conservation and the town lands and stuff. And he did a real good job for our town. Thank you. Okay, any more questions, comments, or concerns in reference to the um, forestry project? And it requires nothing of us okay. other than to thank the Town Lands Committee, the Conservation Commission, and Tim Nolan. Thank you. No, the public should read up on it. It's very knowledgeable history and stuff. Um, he did a very good job with it. Yeah. And Thank I will you. say that the forester told me that that Goodwill property, especially some of the sections that were expanded, are some of the most beautiful pieces of property he's been on in a long time. And this is a guy that gets paid to spend time walking through the woods. So uh, we're very lucky to have those natural resources. Yep. Barrington's a gem, that's for sure. Um, moving on to the electronic signatures, is that correct? Yes. And what so, would you like to uh, discuss about I'm, this? Um, a plan. I'd like to develop a plan. So, um, unfortunately, I, I and I completely understand why, um, you know, on a rolling basis uh, at the town, we have things that come in needing select board signature. And I think one of the side effects of that is as we take those, process them, and send them out to select board members for electronic signature, it's very easy for those to get lost and, and chopped down in an email. Um, and then we have to go chasing, trying to find um, select board member for electronic signature, et cetera. So I'd like to come up with some sort of plan that works for the select board, also works for the town in order to develop some regularity. Um, in my report, I propose that we send out a request for signature just once a week um, so that every Tuesday at noon, you can expect to get an email with everything that needs to be signed for that week in one email, in one document that you can go through, provide your signatures. And the ask um, in, in exchange for that regularity, the ask would be that select board members, or at least three, find the time between noon and three every Tuesday to execute those electronic signatures. So it's I'm open to suggestions, but I, I think we've had trouble so far um, getting signatures that we need in a timely fashion. And I, I think it's partly our fault for sending uh, them. I don't want to say disorganized. We've changed to sending just once a day, um, but I'm open to suggestions. I saw it's like person Hardikoff grimace a little bit with with the window of 12 to 3 and I get it. But uh, I, I hope to open the dialogue and see if we can't find something that works. Um, I only grimace um, at that because if a couple of us are, are involved and, and, you know, today I had a wonderful riveting two hour FEMA um, briefing. Hmm. Um, so my, my concern is just that the dependency is there for that three hour window. And, and, uh, you know, if a few of us professionally are caught up in something else where we can't access it, um, that could be a challenge. I, I guess, you know, for me personally, if we could open up the window where you post it every Tuesday by noon, but you give us until eight o'clock at night to sign everything, I can guarantee for myself that I can I can get to that. Select person Artikoff. Yeah, go ahead, select person Nap. Um I I know Dan had brought this up in the past and uh, more and more, I'm actually kind of leaning to the idea of going to every other week to sign documents because it can absolutely coincide with meetings for for the most part. So I, you know, I I've heard that before from select person Air, and I absolutely respect the perspective. It in many ways it seems like it reduces work. However, 
I've recently um, changed my mind about that because I was on the receiving end of a municipality sending funds to uh, my nonprofit and it took almost six weeks. And I can tell you that there's a lot of small vendors out there that we may utilize here and there for various projects that are dependent upon those funds. And we certainly can't change our payroll to a biweekly payroll without state approval. That's that's a much more involved process. And it can never be just because it's easier on us. It has to be to benefit the employee, not the municipality. So I think that's often why municipalities still pay on a weekly basis. Those are just some of my comments in response. Select person, Bailey, go right ahead. Thank you, ma'am. One of the things I looked at reading this over, and I, I do respect uh, Select Person Ayer's uh, comments and Mr. Knapp's comments. I'll select Person Knapp, sorry. <clears throat> but I think that if we extended it from Monday to uh, uh, Tuesday, I think that on Wednesday we should be able to do it on a weekly basis. And if we should have a uh, time-sensitive document that needs to be signed, we could receive notice by email and or messenger, and then we could turn around and get it signed and get it taken that way. But I think uh, a lot post them on Monday and Tuesday, and then we check them and have them all done by then. I think that's the way to go. But I think, but this has to uh, coincide with the COVID-19 uh, statement from the governor. Any other comments, questions, or concerns from the select board in reference to this? Go ahead, select person here. I am a Yankee. I'm honoring, stubborn, and we are having big changes coming in the future and stuff. And I cannot adjust to this computer stuff. I use it on my smartphone. We don't get along that good sometimes. But um, two, I don't feel I need to look on paper, look at stuff. I'm, I'm putting my name on the money I'm responsible for. I need to look at paperwork and spend time looking. I cannot do it with computers. I'm not. I'm computer illiterate. I admit it. But basically, I don't feel comfortable over the years of things with our accounts and stuff. Uh, I don't see there's any dishonesty or anything. There's a lot of simple mistakes and stuff. Things you overlook, all these things you keep getting brought up. And when, I don't think, I'm not blaming anyone. I'm not criticizing staff or anything. But I think sometimes we miss a dot and stuff. It ain't much, but then we find out what later, then we have to correct it. So that's why I would rather have ample time to review and check things. Okay, so an eight hour window for you would not be enough. Yeah. I can get down there physically. I can read it uh, physically. Okay. I'm not into this electronic thing. And I'm getting emails four in the morning, eight o'clock, random calls up, and it's supposed to be shut off. By that. And then now it won't let me in and allow me in there. Wants to know my presence, where I'm at, and stuff. This is New Hampshire. I live free or die. Yeah, right. So um, I have the alerts turned off. So my emails get sent to me, and I, I review them when I'm able to. Um, what if you physically reviewed the material on Tuesdays between 12 and 5 and then signed electronically so there was only one set of signatures? I will not do electronic. Okay. So, uh, unfortunately, I'll, I'll asking I'll, our town administrator to keep... Solution. But basically, I will not be one of the three electronics. Oh, okay. I think I given right. Okay, any other questions, concerns, or comments? Um, select person, Bailey, I see your hand up. Thank you very much. Why couldn't uh, uh, select person air go down and sign sign the uh, hard copy, and then why can't we attach the other two signatures or the other four, depending on what you have, to the document, so you still have your minimum of three signatures? It, it uh, creates uh, a... A second set of documents that have to be retained for the appropriate time frame. So it's creating twice the work for our staff. <clears throat> well, no, I, th I think you misunderstood what I was saying. We, they have to print it anyway. And so, and then when they print it, it comes to us electronically. It's the whole document. What's to prevent uh, uh, Mr. The select person here from going down and signing the original document? And then when you have the attached uh, electronic document, I, I, um, or, am I, or am I missing how this, this is done? 
Do, yeah, so why don't I let the town administrator in. speak? Thank you. Yeah, so um, we, I mean, we can adapt the process however we want. The, the only reason I'm bringing this up is because we're having trouble getting signatures. Um, and I, I was hopeful that it would be easier to get the signatures we needed in a timely fashion, uh, being able to sign them electronically, uh, remotely from anywhere. Um, but the reality is um, we're, we're not able to do that. And I don't want to be or put staff in a situation where they're constantly calling, emailing, texting select board members to get signatures because I feel like if I was a select board member, I wouldn't want that. If that doesn't bother you and you're fine with the, the reminders and you need to sign something, we can continue status quo. Um, and I guess I would just ask that um, if it's possible, if at all possible, select board members um, could review your email, hopefully on a daily basis or every other day to check for those requests for signatures um, or know that you might be called or texted um, because we've had something sitting in there for a week or more uh, that needs a signature. So. We can adapt the process. It's it's working okay now. I was hoping it would work better. And if if the board doesn't um, feel the need to to have the regularity, we can leave it as it is and and you know chase down signatures as necessary. Uh, but I would just ask that um, the uh, select board members uh, try to get into that email to check for the request for signatures. Um, you know at least every other day. Well, Connor, I'd say that was well put. I, I still think that uh, with myself, I know I was guilty because I would turn around and do them, and then I would send Connor a note, did you get them? And he says, you didn't do anything. And finally, after he walked it, walked me through it a couple of times, now I feel that uh, I'm doing well at my home computer. I just have to pick up my phone and be able to uh, go down further and see where that little box is on the left-hand side to push. I, it's going to be there, but, you know, I... I think a uh, Monday to Tuesday to close a business on Tuesday is enough time and it still allows the payroll to be posted and you could still review it online and get it done. You can do it after hours and go that way. Thank you. Okay. Great. So we'll, um, we'll continue status quo. If you have suggestions, let me know. Um, and we'll, uh, I'll keep you posted next time if we need to make any further adjustments. Okay. Are, are, is the rest of the select board willing to do the Monday and commit to Tuesday close of day? I am. So between am. Monday and Tuesday, you'd receive the alert. You'd sign by five o'clock Tuesday. Is everybody? I mean, I'll do a better effort. I, I know I'm still getting used to the Microsoft Outlook, so. Yeah, yes. Okay, very good. Thank you all for your help with this and, and getting, I know this is a strange time for all of us. There's nothing, there's nothing about this pandemic that's, that's left us with normalcy. So thank you um, for working through that. We're on to the Town of Barrington um, services and COVID-19. Uh, Noah from last time just left it on the agenda in case there was anything the board wanted to talk about. Um, I, I personally think that our different departments throughout the town are doing an amazing job keeping people uh, informed of what's happening. And I'm grateful for that because um, I think people, you know, have a lot of questions about when things will finally open up and, and what can happen with things. Um, but I also have to say as a town, it is amazing to me the outpouring of support uh, for people through the food pantry, but even online, the level of kindness um, that people are showing to each other in this community. And I think it's really, um, it's telling about what Barrington is and what it means uh, to live here. I did hear this fabulous quote today and I just wanna quickly read it to everyone because we're all going through this right now with the pandemic, but uh, basically, the quote was, in this pandemic, we are not powerless. We have the power to take care of one another. And I think that that's very true in our particular town. And, and I'm, I'm very touched often to see what people are doing to help each other out, whether it's creating masks, um, making donations, helping each other out, waiving rent for clients that live in rental properties. So there's just many things that are super positive about this time where this pandemic is hitting. So Madam, um, Madam moving Chair, on. 
Uh, go ahead, uh, select person well, Bailey. Thank you. I, I I also, you know, being of the age that I am and uh, what have you, I have to tell you that uh, while I was doing some yard work and uh, my wife was uh, going for her walk down there, people that have lived on our street and some other people that we know have just graciously volunteered to help us uh, with food or with medicine. And uh, I'll tell you, it, it's, you know, we're fortunate we can still get out, but some of the other people that they're, that, that I know they're helping is just, it's tremendous people here in town. And, I, and it just uh, kind of makes the hair in the back of your head stand up a little bit when you you know, people ask you, can I help you? And you look at the individual and you go, gee, I don't know. I know they live down the street, but I don't know their name. So anyway, your comments were perfect. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. go ahead, select person air. I still believe we have not seen the aftershocks of this. There's going to be social adjustments, culture sh shocks. We took everything so much for granted. Things are going to change. We're going to have to adjust our lives and stuff. And then get back to the basics and stuff on priorities because things are going to tighten up and stuff. It was easy to shut the switch off. To turn it back on, it's going to take a lot longer to warm up. You're probably very correct in that, especially from an economic standpoint. Okay, um, moving on to new business, T.A. MacGyver. Yes, uh, State Bridge Aid Project Amendments. So, uh, as you know, the State Bridge Aid Program, uh, Barrington had three projects. We completed the Malgo Bridge Project. Uh, State Bridge Aid Program provides 80% of the funding and uh, dictates uh, the majority of the requirements for the process. Uh, these are multi-year projects uh, through the planning phase and engineering phase. Uh, so it's not uncommon uh, to have amendments as the scope changes for certain reasons. Uh, presenting two amendments, um, one for the Green Hill Bridge project, one for the Old Settlers project. Green Hill Bridge project amendment is based on a change of scope um, for new DES wetland regulations. Um, and subsequently, the uh, Department of Transportation has additional requirements for the um, um, for compliance with the new DES wetland require uh, wetland rules. So the, the change order for Green Hill Bridge uh, is to adapt to that change. And the Old Settlers Bridge, uh, there was a requirement to have a phase 1A archaeology study done. Um, I provided the board that report. Uh, they found a 19th century blacksmith shop uh, that the Heritage Bureau has necessitated a phase 1B archaeology study. Uh, the value of the Green Hill Bridge amendment is $10,768. Barrington's portion being $2,153.60 and the value of the Old Settlers Amendment is $5,996 with Barrington's portion being $1,199.20. Okay, would anyone like to um, discuss this or move to a motion? Yeah. Go ahead, select, select person air. Um, with the changes in society and everything coming forth to I'm not sure that money is going to be provided. There's any guarantee we can have it will be matched. And I feel we should table old settlers because it's not a pro. It's not, it's not supposed to do in 2027. And I would hate for us to get stuck with over a million dollars tab on that. Um, and we put out the vote already on Green Hill. Continue with that, but. Old settlers needs more work than that bridge. The bridge actually is wider than the road. I've been up there with my ten wheeler. It's structurally sound. They run hundred thousand pound wood chips over it. There is a guardrail issue and stuff, but the road itself needs to be upgraded. And that's a so, big expense. So <laughs> we we have full understanding that eighty percent of these projects are funded through state dollars. Is that correct, T.A. MacGyver? Not guaranteed though. Yes, and I think what what Dan's talking about is the, you know, the state programs, the state reimbursement programs, funding programs are subject to change just like anything else. The, the bridge aid program has been reliable for a number of years. They stopped accepting new applications to make sure that they had the funding in place uh, to pay for the projects they had accepted. Both of these pro projects have been accepted into the program. The reality is the more and the reason I could support delaying this project 
is the closer we have the shovel ready projects, the easier it's going to be to secure um, the, the any matching funds. Um, the federal government, it's, I think it's very likely after this economic downturn that there'll be infrastructure stimulus money that come down to the state and pushed out to municipalities. And that money, for very political reasons, that money doesn't go to the projects that need it most necessarily. Those go to projects that are shovel ready, that they can get done and say, hey, look, we built this bridge with this money. And I don't think there's any benefit in delaying our readiness for these projects that need to be done. Um, Dan's point about the the money isn't guaranteed. He's not wrong. The you know the old settlers bridge was pushed out pushed out to 2027 uh, based on the funds that the bridge aid program anticipates. They collect those. The, a majority of those funds are through commercial vehicle registrations and gas tax, um, which is certainly subject to a, a downturn in the economy. Um, but there's there in my opinion, there's no reason to delay these projects. <laughs> Any other questions, comments, or concerns from the select board? Nope. Would anyone like to make a motion to authorize the two amendments as proposed? Um, Andy Knapp, I'll make a motion to um, accept the amended changes uh, for the state bridge aid product project for Green Hill Road Bridge and Old Settlers Road Bridge. And I I'll would second, I'll I second would, it. Oh, go ahead. Okay. So Knapp and Bailey, very good. And roll call vote, please. Yeah, no. Bailey, aye. Knapp, aye. Bush, aye. Hardicop, aye. And just two other votes to correspond. I appreciate your support with moving forward with this. Um, in, in order to fund the expenditure, um, letter V or number five and number six um those motions uh, which um i'd like to have is two uh, because the funding sources are separate yep. so the first one the select board is okay go ahead i would make the motion to um authorize the select board uh to expend an additional five thousand nine hundred ninety six dollars from the bridge and culvert capital reserve for old settlers is second. there a second on that second select uh person bailey seconds that roll call vote please yeah, no. Bailey, aye. Knapp, aye. Coach, aye. Articoff, aye. The motion passes. I'd also like to make a motion that the select board authorize spending up to 15000 from the Green Hill Bridge non-lapsing account that passed in March of 2020 to cover the remaining portions of the engineering contract, including the amendment listed above. Is there a second on that? I'll second. Seconded by Bailey. Roll call vote, please. Yeah, no. Bailey, aye. Knapp, aye. Suppose aye. Hardikoff, aye. The motion's passed. Moving on Thank to the you. Conservation Commission grant opportunity. Uh, this is an FYI heads up. Um, the Conservation Commission is exploring a grant opportunity to, to conserve attractive land on Nipple Lake. The um, Conservation Commission will be discussing it more at their May 7th meeting. Uh, to determine um, the research that they've done and, and if they're interested in moving forward. The application deadline for the grant is May 30th, so it will have to go before the select board on May 11th. And so the take window with a Thursday meeting before a Monday select board meeting to get the board information. Uh, so the Conservation Commission acting in good faith to keep the board informed of grant opportunities they may pursue have uh, wanted to share some information up front with the knowledge that more information will come late before the May 11th meeting for consideration by the select board. So uh, the attached, I didn't provide a printed copy, but the attached, uh, the link provided is a PowerPoint presentation that um, Charlie Briggs presented to the Conservation Commission from the Nipple Lake Association, uh, indicating the value of conserving land on the lake um, and what they might be looking at. There's a Landry property up there that they might be looking at conserving and some of the possible grant opportunities. So a uh, select person air as a member of the Conservation Commission can certainly fill in the gaps, but this is just an FYI. Certainly if you wanted me to bring it back to the Conservation Commission or select person air, we could knowing that uh, you'll be asked to make a decision on May 11th. I have a comment that I would or a conversation piece that I would like to be brought back to them. 
Great. And, and the general comment is, is um, I've been I've been pretty vocal about the fact that um, they need to maintain the properties they have. And we have a bridge on a piece of property or a dam at a piece of property going into um, to the Goodwill conservation area that has work that needs to be done and needs to be managed and maintained. And I will not support conserving more land until they take responsibility for the dam and maintain the, the commitments that they have already made in this town. Um, and I need to make a statement. Before Go ahead, select said. person here. All right. This is the situation. Charles Briggs is a member, lives at Nippo Lake. We, he, we voted and stuff with no affiliation with conservation. He's working. It's Nippa Local Association who is going to approach the Landry's. And then they are working with the state already and stuff. And then they're going to talk to Southeast Land Trust. And there's another place on the other side, Layton's property that's coming forth too. So it's not necessarily the conservation, but they're going to be part of it. And I just told them, which yeah, we should FYI you guys so you know about it. So it's not 100% conservation. It's only, a, the conservation is only a small part, but they may have part of the role in it. So you guys need information. And then May 29th, I thought I wrote down was the due date. And I didn't want it coming in the board at the last minute. That's why we all suggested FYI so we know about it. So. We don't even know if the deal is going to happen yet. So the so Nipple makes an agreement with the homeowner. It might not even happen. Okay. Qu other out. questions, comments, or concerns? Yep. Okay. Was... My concern is the Conservation Commission has repeatedly dragged their feet, and unless it was going to hinder their progress, they would finally turn around and do things. Uh, to, just for one instance, is the uh, parking lot across from the Litchfield property there on Route 9. <clears throat> I'm telling you, I just, uh, I can't support when we have to turn around as, as a board, turn around and I don't want to say we fight, but we really have a tough time getting them to do what the voters have voted for them to do, and that's to maintain the property that we have in service. And they're just not doing it. And, and to have them have more, and then say to us, like happened numerous years ago, I think it was 10, 12 years ago, it got to be the point, oh, we can't do it. But the minute the board turned around and put money out, oh, then they were able to get out and do all the inspections and what have you for the money that was involved. And I don't know where that sits today, but, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, uh, you know, they, they have to show me that they're that they're willing to maintain what they have before we turn around and give them anything else. Thank you. Uh, select person air. All right. This is all came into the conservation. It had, the conservation had nothing to do with this application and stuff, with the state and everything working on this stuff and the communities up. So as soon as I have more information and update, I will get it to you guys. Right now, it's, it's too premature. This is only FYI. It might be coming up. Okay. Very, very but they still stuff. have to use the conservation uh, fund money to pay for a certain percentage of what's going on. It's not free to the town. It's, we're still going to have to spend taxpayers' dollars. So right. it, it sounds to me like select person Knapp would like an answer on what's happening with the dam on the Richardson property. And that um, select person heir who is the liaison, or are you, are you a member of the um, Conservation Commission now? I'm a member now. Yeah. So he's bringing forward that we're going to expect to see this uh, for a May 11th meeting. Okay, moving on to the safer grant opportunity. Great. I see the fire chief still on. Uh, what we're looking for here, and I'll let the uh, chief provide details, it is authorization to pursue a grant opportunity. This is a grant the town has pursued in years past unsuccessfully. Um, this wouldn't be um, a, a vote also accept the grant uh, if the 
uh, town were to be offered the grant, it would come back before the board um, to just to for further discussions. Um, but there is a um, funding match for the grant over a three year schedule, which was provided in the paperwork. Uh, I'll let the fire chief uh, explain the process and any details you might want to know. I'm not hearing. Is anyone hearing the chief correctly? No. Um, the chief? Uh, that was that was, that was Jim Kosha. <clears throat> Rick, I muted. Yeah. Very good. All right. So the the safer grant is it used to be a 50 50 match and after three years you had to keep the uh, employees for two years after that and so what FEMA did was change it so it, they pay 75 percent the first two years and they pay 35 percent in the, in the third year so the town <clears throat> has a better understanding not getting hit with a big cost at the end of the thing you're, you're picking up most the cost in the third year so actually <clears throat> looking for at this point we've been working and moving in the direction of uh, putting the information together to apply for the grant um, it's competitive uh, and we you know we don't obviously know whether we'll get it or not we certainly hope we're putting a good enough package together to offer it um, and so what we're really looking for tonight is permission to continue down the path of applying for the grant should we be awarded the grant, we'd have to come back to you um, with all the numbers. We have um, six months once the grant is awarded to the town and we accept it. We have six months in order to make the hires and have the hires on, on staff and ready to go. Ball so it's my understanding. My understanding, Chief, that you're just asking for permission to apply once again for the SAFER grant. That's correct. Okay. Would anyone like to um, have questions, comments, or concerns in reference to this? Just a quick question to Rick. Did Have we received this at all in the past or? No. Not? No. No. We've not we been approved yet. We've been applied. We've applied for it three different times and, and uh, it we did not receive it uh, at all, ever. Yeah, I didn't think we did the last time. Would anyone on the select board like to make a motion? I'd like to make a motion to allow uh, Chief Walker to uh, go ahead and apply for this grant. Do I have a second on that motion? Yeah. Uh, select person air motion that you would second the motion. Roll call vote to give select person air. Air I. Bailey, I. Snap, I. Jim. Jim. I muted you, Jim. Jim. Oh, suppose I. Artikoff, I. Thank you. Okay, Chief. Um, we are now moving on to select person reports. Let's start with select person Sakosha since he's unmuted. <laughs> <laughs> Select person, Sakosha, could you report out on the Rec Commission or the Planning Board? Yes, I can. Thank um, you. The, the Rec's working really hard. I mean, obviously, they have a lot going on with um, the future builds and the firewall. Um, they're also preparing for the worst as far as, um, you know, summer camp and stuff like that, but they're also preparing for the best as well. Um, they're also looking into doing some fundraisers and... Um, they're just chugging along and um, taking this the best that they can. Select person air, would you like to report out on conservation, town lands or school board? Um, school board, I didn't log in. I had a headache the other night. And the computer thing kind of got to me. And that is splitting headache. So I did not participate in that one. Sorry, shoot me, whatever. Um, conservation. You good? Give him a break on this. This is more the applicant in the state. Yes, this has been a long going thing with Nipple Lake since 2000, 2000 2005 and stuff. It's, and they're working on a solution and stuff. And now they have the opportunity, maybe they're going to talk to the homeowner 
the homeowners will, and then Southeast Land Trust is going to get involved. The NIPO, the state of New Hampshire, and conservation is going to have a small part in it. They will be named in it. So it'll probably be a joint venture with Southeast Land Trust um, for the grants, whatever. Um, and town lands, um, we're trying to get together a uh, social distance meeting outside and stuff, not this virtual stuff. Um, so it's getting warmer out, and we will get a meeting together. And they have a list for you to auction off um, 20 tax properties. But I think we, we're, they're going to suggest that we wait, extend the due date a while to see what's going on in the um, future. Um, with everything to stay and this everything when they live everything is listed and things get back to somewhat normal hopefully someday that's it okay select person bailey report out please thank you very much i have two reports and one concern my first report is for the zba we had uh, four cases come before us uh one case was continued on uh for uh, richard uh, kessley but the uh, the other three for uh, for setback minimum setbacks and just just normal cleanup material for the for the ZBA that was taken care of and the other one will be continued for the next meeting. And I had the uh, meeting I went to for the uh, library trustees and uh, elections were held uh, for it. Uh, Lindsay was uh, reelected for the chair and. Uh, uh, Lee was got the uh, vice chair and uh, Karen uh, went to the uh, secretary and uh, Susan still remained as the treasurer. I must tell you that uh, this was a, uh, a pretty good, pretty good meeting when it comes for uh, information for how they're going to handle uh, uh, the public on the uh, size and uh, type of material they're going to be putting in for the new building. They did uh, say that they are going to go forward and try to put a new plan together. Uh, the uh, chair, Ms. Lindsay, she turned around and uh, has gone to uh, the architect and has and has asked the architect to provide uh, uh, a different uh, plan to go forward with it. And uh, one of the things that, uh, so I haven't had anything on that, that's not expected until uh, July time frame, as best I can tell here. One of the other items they talked about was uh, why they only received 37% of the vote this time here. And of course, I probably overstepped my personal feeling, but one of the things I said to, uh, individuals that were there from the other committees that do the fundraising and what have you i said you get more honey uh than you do with uh with vinegar from being nice and everything and so i made a comment on that just because an individual did not want to support the library either monetarily or with a vote there was no need for individuals to try well to chastise that individual for his way of thinking it didn't go over <clears throat> smoothly but it went over and that's that's all I have to report for that the other issue madam chair I have is that uh, just ask for a uh, consideration uh, for a letter to mrs. Hatch for her services uh, I think that uh, that's something that uh, uh, if, if the chair would uh, think about it and then maybe talk about it later on I would I would sure appreciate that and that's my report Absolutely, absolutely. Select uh, person. Yeah. Go ahead, select person here. Um, George, I think you need to make a correction. Uh, it's forty-seven percent this year and fifty-three percent last year. I think you said thirty-seven. I did yeah. say thirty-seven at the meeting, and I, that's why I had my notes right here. And I, I agree with you; it was forty-seven percent. Thank you. Yeah. I just uh, made a mistake at the meeting. Yep. Yeah. So my my report out um, in reference to the transfer station. Um, first of all, for all of our residents, the um, drop off for recyclables and trash Tuesdays and Thursdays, 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. It is open and we're hoping that people will consider while they are home using those weekdays 
to drop off um, their trash and recyclables. It would reduce the lines on Saturday. Um, some major components of work that's being focused on or issues that are being focused on signage at the facility, the traffic flow at the facility, um, the cost of recycling. Uh, and I think that Aaron, who is um, heading up and directing the transfer station and recycling is going to be available and on site Saturday doing a poll of whether Tuesday or Thursday nights remaining open later would actually encourage people to use those dates more often than the Saturday um, openings. I see select person now appreciates that. So Aaron is pursuing that as well. Um, we did talk a little bit. If anyone out there has a drone, they're looking to put together a um, a, a flow video for people uh, in conjunction with understanding how to enter the facility, uh, how to wait and, and create a little bit of distance at the facility. Uh, and so if anyone has a drone and would like to volunteer to work with Erin Paradise on this, she would appreciate it. And I think that there's some great committee members with some really forward thinking ideas and, and we'll see some neat messaging coming out uh, from a multi-generational approach on how we reduce, uh, reuse, and recycle. So that was that was the gist of that. Um, any other public comments out there? We have up to 15 minutes. No, Chief Walker, not you. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, we 15 minutes, three minutes per person. If anyone would like to speak during the public comment section, please um, alert the. I'll, I'll get to our select people who'd like to speak, but please alert our town administrator with a, a chat message or unmute yourself. I think star six on your phones, uh, unmute on your picture. It's in, uh, if, you, if you mouse over your picture, it will pop up with an audio or um, a microphone and you just click it and unmute yourself. Otherwise, I'm gonna go to Andy Knapp for public comment. Go ahead, Andy. Um, well, two things. One, I would like to say that, uh, you missed me for select persons reports, but uh, oh, I'm, so, I'm so sorry, <laughs> but I was it's it's OK because I was not at the planning board meeting. Like um, I do. However, I did want to make sure that it was noted that um, the Miller Falls Realty LLC um, application was continued. Uh, there was a design review um, for the Waldron B. Haley Revocable Trust. Um, that was covered. And um, then uh, there was also the uh, follow up on um, the 125 development from Mr. Falzoni. Okay. And then the last thing I would like to say is um, under public comment is as a resident, um, I do appreciate the um, lands that are conserved um, this weekend. I actually spent some time with my wife and my son out walking um, the trails in the town forest behind the uh, highway garage and did the entire trail plus the loop trail over to Brewster Road and back. So uh, great trail if anyone hasn't had the chance to get out there, highly recommend going out there for a walk and enjoying the woods a little. Very good. Um, any other public comments? Uh, Chairperson T. Hardikoff, there was one. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead, T.A. MacGyver. Um, there was one comment that came in from Doug Langdon. Um, I think it was during the conversation with recreation. Uh, he said, would funds for the firewall be part of the budget deliberative process? Um, and I think based on the comments, that would be um, something that would be discussed further at the next meeting once they have um, explored options on if they'd have to go to voters for money or where the revolving fund sits. So um, just want to make sure that comment made it into the record. Um, two other just real quick things. Um, on, at the planning board meeting on Monday, uh, the town hall project uh, re uh, received conditional approval um, for their site plan review. Um, and so that was a big step for that project. Uh, one of the other uh, unintended consequences, but a good benefit 
of uh, operating remotely like we are for most meetings is we've actually been able to record and publish more meetings than we have traditionally. So uh, both the last two planning board meetings, including the six and a half hour meeting that was a month ago um, and the one that was just this past Tuesday, uh, are available online uh, on the town's YouTube channel. Uh, the full team's recording for anybody that's interested in reviewing them. Uh, also the last zoning board meeting. Um, I've encouraged any group that is uh, holding meetings electronically. Obviously the, the software exists to uh, record it simultaneously as you have your meeting. And I think that's a great asset for the community to be able to have that public access, not only to participate live, but to, participate, to view it after the fact. So I would encourage uh, all groups uh, to record their meetings and, and publish them afterwards. Um, you know, school board, library trustees, anybody that's continuing to meet. Uh, I think it's a good benefit of uh, these times to be able to open ourselves up uh, even more. Air? Go ahead, select person Air, three minutes. All right. Um, I was born real young. Um, but basically, um, I don't, on this feedback on the computer and stuff, the town administrator and the tech review, whoever is, does a real good job putting it up. I have referred people to a uh, town website to look it up as it's available. I don't know how to get there, but it is there, trust me. And you can view what our meetings and stuff. So a couple of them have looked it up through the uh, town hall. And they found, I could not help them, but I told them it was available. So thank you for doing the good work on that. Okay. Any other public comments? Uh, otherwise, by the way, Dan, that was only 26 seconds. Good for you. Otherwise, I will um, ask that we conclude the select board meeting for April 27th. Uh, we have a non-public meeting um, the first select board members. So I think the easiest way to do it would be to entertain a motion to go into non-public for personnel and reputation. And I sent out the link uh, just before six uh, for that separate teams meeting for the non-public session. And uh, I think for consistency, um, it, we should probably come back on this meeting in the public session uh, to adjourn um, and make sure that's recorded in the minutes. Okay, um, um, I'll so, entertain a motion to enter non-public for purposes of personnel and reputation. Okay, a second. No, I need a first. I'll oh, make a motion to go in a non-public session for personnel and uh, reputation. reputation. Okay, select person Bailey's made that motion yeah, at 843. Select person Air at 843 has seconded it. Roll call vote, please. Air aye. Bailey aye. Knapp aye. Dakota aye. And Hardikoff aye, thank you. And I'd like to make a motion to come back out and on public. Very good, there. we'll come back out and go into public session after we finish non-public, thank you. Okay, select board members go to that um, email from just before six to click on the non public. George link. Joy is yep. now exiting. Just a reminder to the select board members make sure you exit the meeting that you have on. That way it doesn't continue recording. Very good. The recording, and then uh, oh, so okay. we can tack it on to the end of the other one. Yep, it says it started. Um, and would you like to make a motion to? Exit. Adjourn. No new information. And I would second that. Roll call vote. Air aye. Knapp aye. Toast aye. And Harnikoff aye. Thank you all very much for your patience during our virtual meeting. And we'll see you all in a couple weeks. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Bye. Take care.